Hey everyone, uh, this lecture I'm going to talk to you guys a little bit about articulations or joints. We're going to do this in at least a couple of parts. So uh, this first part we're going to talk about the different kinds of joints and how they work. So first off let's talk about the reasons you have joints. There's actually two reasons. The really obvious one is movement, right? So your skeleton's made of bones, you need to be able to move those bones. So doing this, being able to move, is part of the reason you have articulations. There's also another reason though. Articulations also cause your skeleton to have stability. So remember a joint or an articulation is where any two bones come together and you have articulations that don't move at all. So for example, in your skull you have these things called sutures and the bones are knitted together like this. So in that case we are having those joints there for stability. We don't want those bones to move relative to each other. We're going to focus a little bit more on the joints that move as we move through here. So <clears throat> let's talk a little bit about how we classify joints. So there's actually two ways to do this. The first way is what's known as a functional classification and this is based on how much the joint actually moves. And we have three different kinds of classifications. The first group of joints based on movement are called synarthrotic or synarthroses. And synarthrotic joints don't move. So remember that prefix syn when we had synthesis? That means to join together. So the bones in your skull, those are synth synthroses or synarthrotic joints. They don't move. Now this next one, amphiarthroses, those are joints that move slightly. And amphi, that prefix means, well, think of it this way, it means sort of. It kind of moves. So amphiarthroses, these would be, for example, between your pelvis and your sacrum. You want a little bit of movement there, but not a whole bunch. Otherwise, when you took a step, your whole pelvis would flex. <clears throat> now, the ones we're going to focus mostly on are these ones called diarthroses. Those are freely movable joints. So if you think of a joint, typically that's a diarthrotic joint. So you think a lot of movement. So synarthroses, those are doing stability. Amphiarthroses, a little bit of stability. Diarthroses, a lot of movement. Now, the other way we classify joints is what they're actually made out of. So we have three structural classifications. We have fibrous joints, and those are usually held together by fibrous connective tissue. Think ligaments. Ligaments are those uh, cords of connective tissue that hold bones together. You can also have cartilaginous joints, just like they sound. So in a cartilaginous joint, you have cartilage holding that joint together. And a good, good example of that is between your ribs and your sternum. That is a cartilaginous joint. And the one we're going to spend most time on is called a synovial joint. That is a specialized joint that has a space between the bones, and that space is filled with fluid called synovial fluid. So I want to give you some examples of these different kinds of joints and how you fit together the functional with the structural classification. So just to look at a few of these. So these are all examples of synarthrotic joints. So for example, the sutures between your skulls, no movement, synarthrotic, and it's a fibrous joint. It's held together by ligaments. Um, the special one in your mouth, so your tooth. So the way it works is you have a socket in your jaw and your tooth fits into the socket like this. That's called a gomphosis. That's a specialized joint. That's a fibrous joint. You have this cartilaginous joint that doesn't move between your ribs and your sternum. That's technically called a synchondrosis. Syn together, chondrosis, made of cartilage. Um, in terms of amphiarthrotic joints, these are joints that are slightly movable and they're either made of fibrous tissue. So for example, at the ends of your hand, arms here where your wrists form, between the radius and ulna, you have a syndesmosis that's held together by connective tissue. And then the one that you guys will have to know for your skeleton is the pubic symphysis. That's an example of a cartilaginous joint. And those two pubic bones are held together like this. There's a sheet of fibrocartilage between them, and that's what's holding them together. Now we're going to spend most of our time talking about this kind of joint. And I've blown this up so you can see it a little bit easier. This is an example of a synovial joint. Now, a synovial joint has most of your joints that you think about. So if you think about your elbow, your shoulder, your hip, 
Those are all synovial joints, and they all have a few things in common. So where the bone comes together on the uh, edge of the bone, so the, the, where the two bones come together, those ends of the bones are going to be capped with hyaline cartilage. And that cartilage is going to be there to provide a nice smooth surface and a little bit of cushioning so the bones don't grind together. Around the joint, there's a capsule made of fibrous connective tissue. There's this joint capsule. So around all your fingers, so right here where my joints are, there's actually a sheet of connective tissue. Think about like a cuff that connects the two bones. <clears throat> that actually helps make this space here. There's a space between the bones. That space is filled with fluid, synovial fluid. It's a viscous, slippery fluid that helps provide lubrication so when the joint moves, um, you don't have bones grinding against each other. And then the other thing here is there are ligaments that are holding the joint together. So you have these ligaments that are attached to the bone, um, usually on the outside of the, of the capsule, and they're helping to hold those two bones together. So synovial joints are very, very complex, and I'll show you an example of one. So here is your shoulder joint. So this is looking at a front view, an anterior view of your shoulder. So here's the humerus, right? So this is the bone in your upper arm. Here's the head of the humerus. It's coated with hyaline cartilage. This is the scapula. So this is the glenoid cavity on the scapula. That's the other side of the joint, and that's also aligned with hyaline cartilage. Kind of surrounding this entire joint, you have this articular capsule, and then you have ligaments. Now, the other thing that I didn't mention in the last slide because you couldn't see it, there's also a, a, a membrane here. You have a synovial membrane. And that membrane is, is actually secreting the synovial fluid. So when you move your shoulder around, like you raise and lower your arm, all of these things are kind of moving together, and that's a very, very complex joint. Now, if you look at a lateral view of the joint, you can see the humerus has been removed. This right here is the glenoid cavity. So this is the, the scapula side of the joint. And you can see capping that glenoid cavity, we have a sheet of hyaline cartilage. And then there's the capsule around the joint. And here you can see, here's a tendon that belongs to the biceps brachii on your arm. So these joints are, are very complex. Now, because they move so much, you have to be able to prevent friction. And so there are a couple of structures that are really important. We mentioned the synovial fluid in the joint, but <clears throat> there are other structures outside the joint. So there are these sacs called bursae. Um, basically, it's a, sh it's a sack of connective tissue, it's got a synovial membrane on the inside, and it's filled with synovial fluid. And this bursa actually sits between the bones of the joint and it moves. So as the bones move relative to each other, the bursa can slide back and forth and they help reduce friction. Where you have tendons, and remember tendons connect muscles to bone, when you have a tendon going through the joint, a lot of times you'll have this tendon sheath, which is basically a bursa, so a bursa is kind of flat. You wrap it up like this around that tendon, and as the tendon moves, it reduces friction. So you have all of these things. Now, because these joints are highly movable, in order to stabilize them, the shape of the surface of the bones where they come together, so if you think of your hip, your hip is what's known as a ball and socket joint. So the head of your femur looks like this, and on your pelvis, you have this indentation that looks like this. Those two things fit together, and that helps stabilize the joint. We also have ligaments. So those ligaments that are holding the bones together help stabilize the joint. And lastly, but not leastly, and actually very important, is muscle tone. So the muscles around the joint help to stabilize it. So you have these highly movable joints, like your shoulder and your hip. There's lots of muscles there to help stabilize that joint.